What's good, y'all? Welcome back to the Onyx Report's daily black masculinist news. Uh, getting into issues that are relevant to black men, right? Um, today, I, I found a piece that <sighs> kind of revealed an ongoing, I think, problematic issue um, in our community as it pertains to um, parenting, right? Most particularly. Um, so this particular case you can find on Augusta, AugustaCrime.com. AugustaCrime.com. It's entitled, Augusta Mom Spends Fourth Day in Jail for Refusing to Let Her Son Back in the Apartment. Right? An Augusta mother remains in jail after her arrest Wednesday for refusing to let her car-stealing son back in her residence, according to sheriff's report. Uh, uh, to a sheriff's report. Dominique L Lois Font, uh, 35, told deputies that she would rather go to jail than let her 16 year old son back in the apartment on Brindle Drive. She told deputies that the teen stole her vehicle and she wanted to pursue charges against him. Officers said the Department of Juvenile Justice refused to take the teen into custody because he was only 16 years old. Uh, still, uh, Font uh, refused to take over the care for her son, the report says. He will not set foot into the residence. She was quoted as saying officers asked her to provide information on a relative who may take the teen. She said, ask him. I advised Font that she will be charged with deprivation of a minor if she fails to take custody of the child. Uh, Corporal Matthew Sanderson said in his report, Font stated that she will go to jail before she takes her child back into her, re her residence, then went into the house and slammed the door, then locked it. DFACS officials came to the house and two juveniles were turned over to a family cousin. Uh, Font was then arrested and taken to jail for contributing to the delinquency or dependency of a minor. Now, this is interesting, right? Because to me, this, this represents in a particular way the fallout of the removal of black men as fathers from the home. And I say removal. Because on a social level, on a societal level, on a, and especially on a policy level, this was this this was a practice that um, was put into place decades ago. And I know the only way we mainly talk about it is as fathers as failures, right? Black men just refusing to be fathers. That was the comfortable trope that I've heard for the last forty years, fifty real really, but especially in the last forty. But there are other ways to look at this, and there are other questions to be brought to bear. Right. What drove black men out of the house? Well, a lot of it had to do with a cross section of family court policies uh, that that granted marriage uh, and divorce, most more particularly, uh, as well as child custody uh, in the favor of women more often than not in favor of mothers. Um, but, uh, you know, you, you had uh, alimony judgments, uh, child support judgments that overwhelmingly penalized uh, fathers. Uh, so, you know, but you also had practices especially in the black community that really reinforced the existence of a gynocracy that placed women in a position of authority and subjected men to partnerships that tended to play, uh, tended to work only at her whim and in, uh, and to her in her interest. And so I think you had many men just backing out of it um, for a variety of reasons. But you also have a phenomena where you have women who are able to choose men um, to uh, impregnate themselves with, essentially, um, you know, especially if these are men who are, who don't want to be fathers, men who may be in and out of uh, of uh, prison, but at the end of the day, men who don't necessarily have um, as much control, right, over the production of children as women do. Now, obviously, you hear people say all the time, "Well, he could just wear a condom. This is his fault. He should have just uh, wrapped it up if he didn't want a child." There's a lot of ways women can get around that, especially when they have at least five major forms of birth control in over 30 different forms, right? Not even including abortion, which many people use as a form of birth control, even though they shouldn't, right? You have all these different options for women. Men still have the same options they've had since the 50s. But if for any reason, right, you're convinced that she's on birth control, especially if you've been together for at least a year, you get comfortable, things are relaxed, and you think you can trust her. And she's using something, or at least that's what you're told, but you know, you're in, you find yourself in a precarious situation. If her biological urge to reproduce overwhelms, whatever agreement you two have, you are now subject to her. So there's a lot of these different issues at play. 
And I'm not saying what the case is for this one because we have no information on the father. But what I hear most often than not when the question is raised is two things. Men are failures for not being present. And if he didn't want a baby, he should have wrapped it up. And these are very, you know, pat little responses that seem nice and neat and place the blame squarely in his lap. And both feminists and men do this to each other. Right. Feminists what make the argument because it absolves women of any kind of responsibility. And it means that they're not able to be critiqued because, you know, God forbid we critique women. Um, and then, of course, you have men being punished because even men learn that that's what we're supposed to do. So we, we, we tend to attack the man before anything else and we just make it his fault. But at the end of the day, um, there are a lot of other dimensions that can come into play where men can be either manipulated or even seduced out of providing sperm. Hell, you even had women uh, who were who were going to find sperm in condoms, use condoms. And, right. In Israel, they call this a spurgling. Right. So it is a thing. It is a thing. The, the spurgling issue. And it is not limited to uh, the black community by any measure. But the point is. When women have an urge to reproduce, you can be told all kinds of things and, you know, you, you can find yourself easily subject to uh, misrepresentation. But the other part of it, the reason I bring up the absence of fathers is it leaves women in a position of authority, which many want to be in. Um, but when it comes to dealing with boys and sons, it can be a problem. You know, this to me is the fallout of the absence of the father, you know, and, and, and in my assessment, you know, I think fathers engaged in a silent strike as far as marriage is concerned as early as the 70s. Generation X only um, and were, were more emboldened because of the way many of these policies were playing out in terms of divorce and child support. So to a greater degree, they avoided marriage. Millennials even more so. And it continues to grow. Nobody wants to regard the institution as a problem in and of itself. So they blame black, they blame men, black men in particular for their absence, but nobody wants to talk about reasons they may be justified and not being present, right? Especially if they never wanted children and were, were you know, vocal about that um, and may have been manipulated into it. Now, this is not just limited to this one case. There's another case that I think is important to look at. And this one I saw on TikTok. Right. Um, well, I actually saw it on Facebook via TikTok. Right. And this is a video. I'm not going to play the video because, you know, I don't know the legalities here, but I will say this much. Uh, it was a video about a young mother, as you can see on the screen. Right. Who created a jail in her home for her son. Right. So she talks about early on in the video. It's about a three minute clip where she talks about how frustrated she is. And how the best and she's actually talking to other mothers and she's saying the best way to handle an errant child who doesn't want to listen is to be basically create a jail for him. So this is the picture of the young man here. She turned her closet into a jail. She only lets him out to eat and go to the restroom or go to school. And the rest of the time he has to sit in his closet. You want to talk about preparation for incarceration. I mean, now you don't even need juvenile facilities. You don't even need the prison, the, the school to prison pipeline. Now you have parents who are urging each other to basically create the same circumstances at home. Now, look, I'm a parent. I know how difficult children can be at a certain point. I get it. But again, I can't help but wonder because she made no mention about a father. And I, I bet you know, in both cases, fathers were completely absent. But again, I don't just interpret that as a father's failure. I think there are a wide variety of issues that can be at play. And women can run a man out of the house, especially if she's already gotten what she wanted. If she wanted to reproduce, if she wanted to have a child, even though she wasn't married and may not have even loved the man in question or wanted to marry the man in question or even wanted to remain in a relationship with him. If she reached the point where she just wanted to be a parent, which in many ways is a biological urge for women, you know, but when you're raised in an era where men are considered disposable, interchangeable, and all you really want one for is protection and sperm and maybe a paycheck, it's not difficult to see how men can be run out of a, a fairly hostile environment, you know, once she gets what she wants. I am not the one to pretend like that doesn't happen. And plenty of people do pretend like it doesn't happen because again, we're comfortable with just blaming men and leaving it at that. No, there's much more that that can happen 
to drive a man out of the scenario. Or hell, it could very well have been a one night stand, a drunk one or a high one at that, where judgment is impaired, condom use may not have been employed. Sometimes it has been. And there have been cases where women have slipped the condom off during sex or during oral performance, especially if two people are drunk or high, all kinds of things can happen. So it's not that I'm saying that these things definitely happened. What I'm saying is there are a variety of options that leave black men in a position where not being in this particular household um, is understandable. But we don't employ those particular ways of looking at the situation because we're taught more often than not that blaming him is sufficient. Leaving her void of blame is progressive. And whatever happens to the child is necessary because she's a strong black mother disciplining her, disciplining her child in any way she can to get through to him. But we're not going to consider whether or not what she's doing is actually preparing him for prison. Or maybe the absence of men um, in this boy's life plays a role in his behavior. Maybe he's experienced some trauma she hasn't bothered to look into. It's all kind of things going on. If you look at D. Ray Davis, the comedian's story, you know, it was his mother's friends that sexually violated him around this boy's age. And, and when kids are traumatized, they will act out, even if you don't know why they were traumatized. Right. But again, these are not things we're taught to look at. We're just told blaming him is sufficient. Right. Right. All right, y'all. Wish you well. Peace.